new york times to an academy award nominated documentary called gasland the nations and even the world's eyes are on our region and the natural gas rush that's underway of course our region is no stranger to all of this this was the birthplace of the natural gas industry over a century ago one would think with almost 150 years of experience we'd have the best thought out approach to natural gas in the world Yet the Marcellus Shale is a game changer. So what's it going to take to do this right? Well, Jan Jarrett represents one vocal environmental group. She's the president and CEO of Penn Future, Citizens for Pennsylvania's Future. And welcome, good to see you. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, and you recently laid out a framework for what might look like a best practice solution to the Marcellus Shale. First off, why did you decide to take that step? Because you've caught a little bit of flack even among the environmental community for, for, for moving forward. That's right. Well the conversation needs to move forward in a productive way and I think that what we wanted to do was sort of reject both both extremes and chart you know a middle way that seems to work for mostly everybody um, you know we don't we want to make sure that the gas drilling is well regulated um, and we want to make sure that there's you know regulated in a way that builds public confidence in order to make the practice uh, more acceptable to communities and to people who uh, are really objecting to it. You know, there are those who just want it to be gone and, you know, some of some of the industry players just kind of want a free hand. And, and so those are the extremes that we wanted to sort of reject. The other thing that we want to make sure is that this conversation happens in the context of our total energy picture. Part of the problem here is that, you know, uh, the way the Marcellus shale gas needs to be accessed through the fracking process it has a big environmental footprint uh, and, it, and it causes some impacts. There's, there's no way to get around it. Um, and you know if you just look at that in isolation you might be wildly alarmed by it but what you've got to do is you've got to put that in, in the context of our energy choices. And right now uh, we are really highly dependent either on very dirty fossil fuels uh, and or fossil fuels that are, you know, controlled by folks who don't have our best interests at heart or, you know, that comes from areas that are highly unstable as we're seeing right now. Sure. So there's environmental issues with other forms of energy production. Yes. There's uh, national security issues based yes. on our dependence on foreign oil. And so having a wonderfully large supply of gas right here at home might help to solve some of those problems. That's exactly right. But for us, you know, for, for, for us, the environmental benefits, the potential environmental benefits of clean air and, you know, energy independence could be outweighed unless the drilling process is well regulated. And so what we decided to do was, you know, lay out a vision of um, a regulatory structure that sets the bar really high, world-class, you know, environmental standards that we set in Pennsylvania and then we insist that the drillers meet. Okay. And if we do that, we believe that um, there will be there will be environmental impacts, but those environmental impacts will be tightly overseen and then, you know, mitigated uh, to a point where it can be acceptable to the community. We can make sure that the water supplies are protected. We can make sure that um, community infrastructure doesn't get damaged too much. And the other thing, you know, we're well known for is we are strong supporters of uh, a drilling tax. We really believe that, uh, like everywhere else in the country where the gas industry is active, uh, they pay a, a drilling tax in those places. Uh, it was interesting. The governor said he wanted to make Pennsylvania uh, the hub of energy production like Texas is. Well, Texas taxes drilling. Not only do they tax the extraction, but they tax gas as a property. So, you know, okay, you want to be like Texas? Then let's 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 get to the business of making sure that uh, we have a drilling tax to cover the damage from drilling is going to inevitably inevitably cause compensate communities for the extra costs that they're bearing, and also be able to make sure that all Pennsylvanians actually uh, are able to benefit from the wealth that's going to be extracted from under our feet. Well, a little bit, as far as when you look at the regulatory environment, I mean, what aren't we doing right now that we should be doing? I, know, I understand some of the regs have been toughened in, in recent yes. months and in the last couple of years. That's are we right. there yet, or is there still more to do? I think there's still more to do. I, you know, I think there needs to be clarity around some of the rules we think that there needs to be greater protection for water, bigger bigger setbacks from uh, water supplies, wetlands, that sort of thing. Uh, right now, it's okay to locate 
uh, gas wells in floodplains. Uh, in fact, there are some in floodplains. We don't think that's appropriate. We think the uh, bonding requirements, you know, the money that, that, that the drillers need to put up to make sure that um, a, a, a well can be reclaimed in the future, um, we think that that's, in, it, that's wholly inadequate. We think that the fines for violations of environmental laws need to be increased in order to really motivate compliance, you know, give another reason for the uh, industry to make sure that they are really trying to meet those standards because if they don't, it's going to actually hurt them a little bit in the pocketbook. So uh, we, we also believe that um, right now local governments have a limited ability to, uh, they don't actually regulate the drilling itself, but they can sort of guide where drilling happens in their communities. We believe that uh, local ability to regulate drilling through their zoning powers uh, needs to be preserved. Um, and we, we also uh, believe that uh, there should be no further leasing of state forest land for gas drilling. And, and just a blanket ban on that or is, are there, is there room down the road for uh, gas drilling on state forest? Actually, we're to the point where we believe that, it, that the places that are not currently drilled uh, have environmental values or economic values that really put them off limits for drilling. Hmm. And you know, the gas industry has 700,000 acres of land available for drilling. Uh, we think that's probably uh, enough, they've got enough to do for a really long period of time uh, to develop those 700,000 acres. So we think that's enough for the state forest lands. All right, well we'll have a link to your website up both in the, in the as we bump to the next break and then at the, at the conclusion of the show so people can go to the penfuture.org and find out specifically Great. what your framework is and we'll Great. hear from the industry in a moment as to, to where, you, where you agree and, and, and where there's a, a little room for dis debate and discussion in the months to come. Jan yes. Jarrett from Penn Future. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for it. having me. Yeah. Next up, an industry perspective from the company that first struck gas in the Marcellus Shale. Stay with us.